Okay, I am coming in to share with you what I am going to do uh, with my bodice. So I am not making a muslin. I know, I know, I know. But hear me out. The um, finished garment measurements is on the pattern front. Um, and I'm going to go with, I'm a 45, but I'm going to go with the 48. I'm going to go up higher because, again, you can always take in fabric, but you cannot release it. <laughs> or I should say you can't add to it if it comes up snug. So I'm just going to go with the 22. But what I have done is taped the yoke front and the yoke bodice front together. <clears throat> and I'm going to put this up against me and I'll show you because I want to make sure, A, the length of the front of the bodice is good um, again because I am full of bust and this tends to raise up uh, the front make sure I have enough um, room in there because if I have to lengthen this I'll have to lengthen the placket you know and different things like that so since I'll just be worrying about this area but the other thing because it does have bust starts I want to make sure this is hitting at the right point on me so if I'll have to lower it, typically I don't have to worry about raising any darts. <laughs> but usually I have to lower it. And if I lower it, will that um, mess with these and, you know, all of that. So I am getting ready to hold this up to me and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm wearing the bra and everything that I intend to wear with this, this dress. Always key, right? And so... Um, I am going to put the pattern up against me. So let's see here what we working with. So I am putting pretty much where it starts at the shoulder for me. Um, so you can see how that will go up under my arm. And then here is where the dart is hitting. My apex is, let's see here, here, and the dart is hitting here. So it's just a little high. Maybe, what is that? Yeah, I'm going to lower it. It looks like I need to lower it. I'm going to have to um, uh, mark this on me, but make sure it's sitting at the right part, yeah. I am going to have to move this dart down. It looks about an inch. Yeah. I'm going to have to mark this on me so I can see clearly. It looks like it's going down to about right there. And that looks to be about an inch. And that is right above. So when I hold this to me, my waist this is hitting above my waist this is ending too high up on me <clears throat> so i am going to measure i'm actually going to take this <laughs> as best as i can to myself um and measure oh actually i, I won't have to i can feel it right here my waist is here I only need to lower it an inch. Yep, that's about an inch. I'm gonna have to lower that um, to get it about, if you can see, it's about right here. My waist is here, see the side meets. Again, I'm noticing this on a few patterns where once it get to the side seam, it seems to be, and I'm gonna do this more clearly off camera, so don't worry. But it looks like I need to take this front piece down about an inch, which means I'm going to have to move the, um, the waist darts, lower the waist darts a little bit, um, the same distance that it is currently. I want to keep that same distance when I lengthen the bodice and then move down the waist darts down that same um, uh, length. Yeah. All right. So that's the only adjustment I am going to do to the pattern so far as fitting. So, yes. 
let's see how this goes okay so all of my pattern pieces have been adjusted so if you can tell here I know it's a bit of a glare um, but I did lengthen it by an inch I moved the dart down because um, it was going way up there and it would have been too close obviously to the bus dart so I did move that down and start that at a new um, point an inch down and then I move the bus dart down and then if you notice on the front piece this is where the original dart was but I moved that down also an inch to correspond to where it originally should be based on the pattern so the front has been done I grabbed the um, left and right placket pieces. I added an inch on both of those. Since I added the inch there, obviously all of this needs to meet up. Um, when I am putting that together. Uh, and then I also, the only other adjustment I am going to need to make according to the pattern because I marked which pieces are going to be the lighter blue and then the Ankara and I the belt is finished I've already finished the belt here here it is I did not record this unfortunately during the time that I am doing all of this sewing we um, have had construction work our builder had to um, fix a sewer pipe underneath our house so it's been a lot of noise and I have been having it jump back and forth so there may not be much recording of me sewing and everything for this one we shall see but I did at least want to come in while it's quiet to share with you um, the belt is done gorgeous um, but the adjustments I needed to make all right time to get all my pieces out and get to sewing all right everybody i am going to get to sewing i'm not sure how much of this is going to be an actual sew with me um because we have that um, um they're repairing a sewage line um underneath our house and so they're walking like back and forth <laughs> outside my sewing uh window and they keep ringing the doorbell need me to do different stuff so i'll be jumping up and jumping down so it may we'll see how it goes i'll record as much as i can but i really wanted to make sure i showed you the adjustments that i made the other thing i wanted to point out because i'm not doing the the tabs or the epaulets on the top i'm not doing the carriers i'm not doing the front bust pockets um i'm just going to jump right in and put the uh darts in the front bodice um in the bust the waist and then in the back bodice the um the waist darts in the back and so for me um i get to skip steps two through eight and then i get to pick it back up and do the stay stitching um around uh the neckline and then it tells you to do the back bust darts but i do all my darts when i have darts to do in the front or the back of something i do them all at the same time as a matter of fact i'm gonna do the darts and the uh, skirt pieces as well and just get all the darts out of the way um, instead of breaking it up stopping and going back doing more darts so that's what i do and then i get to skip steps 11 through 14 and then i pretty much get to pick up um because I did go through all the instructions I'm pretty much starting after all my darts are in and I stay stitched that neckline I'm starting at um, let's see here it is step 10 I want to say where I get to combine the um, the yoke pieces um, I'll be combining the yoke with the uh, bodice uh, pieces. I think that's around step 10. Um, I'm just looking at the pictures right now. And so I am going to refer to the sew along. You all know there's a complete sew along. Norris did this for simplicity. I'll make sure that um, channel is linked down below uh, where that is. Um, but I'm pretty much just going to pick up and sorry, you probably hear the noise. <laughs> um, I'll probably just. Um, watch the sew along for certain steps um like there's a step around the skirt piece um that i want to see and then probably the collar and the um the front uh placket pieces 
is probably all that I'm going to watch the sew along for. Um, but like I said, there's quite a few steps I get to uh, skip. And of course, you all know with denim, me personally, I prefer um, anything I make in denim to have snaps and not buttons. So I will not be doing buttons and buttonholes um, for this particular project. So, all right, I am just going to go ahead and jump into it. We'll see how far we get. But yeah, I can hear the noise. Not sure if you can. And I'm sure they'll be ringing my doorbell again pretty soon. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm gonna try to say this fast because they're <laughs> they're ringing my uh, just rung my doorbell and I have to go back out in the moment. But I have a few minutes. I wanted to share with you what I'm doing different about the sleeve. So it, it says in the instructions, and I did watch the video to make sure you know this will be fine for me to do. But um, you ease the sleeve head right so you can put it into the sleeve and then the in um the instructions in norris video talks about sewing then the main uh, sleeve piece right side together and then you uh have your interface sleeve cuff um or the band that goes around it rather um and then you sew it right sides together and then turn it under a uh, five eighths of an inch and then trim and do all of that. And then you attach it um, to the sleeve, um, both pieces, and you take one piece inside the other piece. I'm not doing all of that. So what I, I am doing, I was like, okay, in my opinion, it's easier depending on uh, just your own personal preference. What I did was I did not interface my sleeve band. I'm using Ankara. So I did not interface that. Um, Ankara is a little bit, um, it's cotton, but you know, I didn't feel the need to interface it, which I'm fine with that. And so what I did was folded the band, the sleeve band in half. And what I am doing is just attaching it to the sleeve and I'm gonna stitch across and then once it's stitched, and let me just finish uh, clipping this. Once it's stitched, and then it's, you know, I can fold it down, I'll press it, and I'll serge that piece. Then I will um, attach together, serge that and attach it together, and then insert the sleeve into the bodice. That's how I am going to do that. Um, much simpler. Um, instead of sewing up the band, sewing up the sleeve, and then putting them together, make sure everything matches up. I'm just going to do this because it matches up. So that is what I am going to do. And yeah, almost done with the bodice. All right, everybody, we are coming in with the full review. Pull up a chair, have me playing in the background, whatever you do. We are getting ready to dive into Simplicity 9463. Ahead of this video, you already saw how things I started out, the adjustments that I made, and yeah, it's time to get into the reveal, which the dress is right here behind me. 
and get into some um, different points and different things I wanted to talk about for this pattern. It is going to be a little bit of a chatty one. So make sure you have your drink of choice again and just, yeah, sit back and let's dive into it. But I first want to thank all of my subscribers. Thank you for those who selected this month's July pattern and focus by Simplicity Patterns. There is a boat that will be closing out by the time you see this within a day um of the next pattern and focus for the month of august so make sure you head over to my community tab and select the pattern that i will focus on in the month of august so as you all know the pattern and focus just real quick for those who are new to the channel is every quarter i select a pattern company that i will focus in on for a couple of reasons one to work through my um, pattern stash. I am sewing other patterns from different companies, indie patterns and different things like that. But the pattern and focus is more purposeful. The uh, viewers, subscribers, you get to select the pattern that I focus on in that particular month. And then I will do a sew with me. Um, the last Vogue one was a, a sew along. So typically I don't do the sew alongs. I more so do the sew with me. The difference between the two is that a sew along, you kind of go on step by step by step with everything. The sew with me is you just kind of watch me go through the process and the adjustments that I've made and all of that good stuff. And that is what I did at the beginning of this video. So um, those adjustments work. <laughs> I know some of you might have been watching and thinking, she's not going to do a muslin of the bodice. No, I figured with the looking at the pattern pieces and taping the yoke front and the uh, front bodice together, holding up to me, doing some, uh, putting some dots and stuff on there to see where everything was placed and if bus stars need to move, all that good stuff. And if that would work. And it worked beautifully, you guys. I'm going to pop up video and pictures throughout so make sure um, you have your eyes on the screen um, but yes all of that worked out the first part of this I'm going to talk about is because you all know I did not do the belt um, that uh, the option for the belt on this pattern I typically don't like structured belts like that I'd like um, uh, more flexible pliable type belts if that makes sense um, so I decided to do and I'll pop it up here the reversible wrap around belt by Rebecca page patterns I will have a link to both patterns down in the description box so if you're interested you can head on over the simplicity pattern I picked up during a Joanne fabrics pattern sale so you can most certainly wait for that and go into the store and pick it up or of course you can get it on the simplicity website um, the reversible uh, wrap belt is by Rebecca page as you all know I do have an affiliate link with Rebecca page so that is down in the description box if you are interested this is my second time making the uh, reversible wrap belt um, because I absolutely love it and I wanted to do something and again I'll pop a picture of the pattern the first time that I made it one side of it was a faux leather and the other side um, was my fabric actually let me grab it okay I went and grabbed it so my first one I made was faux leather so the front is well it's reversible so it doesn't matter what which is the front this here um, is the black faux leather I want to say I had gotten this faux leather from um, Joanne fabrics a long time ago and then the reverse is my bespoke fabric which of course you can go to my website and see all my fabric designs and you will order through spoon flower i'll leave a link down to that below but that's what i did i made this to 2020 the first time i made it was in 2020 i love it because it has these long straps on it and of course all the way down to the strap ends is reversible absolutely love it and so i wanted to do um had make the same type of belt for this garment and i did the darker denim and i also did the lighter denim so that's what i did i know many of you suggested you thought would look nice and i agreed that the ankara that i was using on the sleeve bands and also the ruffle on the bottom would be nice as a reversible on this but i'm thinking about how much wear I would get out of the belt now typically when I wear this one I tend most of the time 
um i have worn it with i've worn it on both sides but most of the time i end up wearing it where the solid side is showing and so um yeah i'm thinking i just kind of feel like the, from when I uh, wear this the most um, the way I wear it the most is on the solid color side and so that's why I decided to do a solid color as opposed to the Ankara and I think the Ankara would have looked would have looked just as beautiful right but again I will get wear this with more outfits different colors so I wouldn't necessarily stick to a denim outfit when I wear this I can put this with any color in my wardrobe right on either side and it can go with anything because it is solid and so the reversible uh wrap belt is so super easy to put together you have your um you're cutting out double obviously for the um for both sides and then you are only interfacing one side of the um of the belt and when you uh and you and you attach the uh the uh ties are a separate piece that you attach and then you're turning it you sew in it was about probably in the middle right here um wrong, uh right sides together and then you turn everything out and then you stitch down and so um and then you top stitch all the way around so you're closing up that opening that you had plus you're top stitching all the way around the belt so so super easy to put together so and it's good for a scrap buster um project as well for me um in, if you saw my plans video, I did uh, say that I thought I had enough fabric to do the yoke pieces as well as the belt. While I end up going back to join fabrics just in case to get uh, more of this uh, fabric, this denim, this lightweight denim, which is probably about four ounces, a four ounce denim weight. Um, and I'm glad that I did. Uh, <laughs> so that worked out. So yeah, that is the belt. I do, if you like belts like this, reversible belts, I highly recommend it. It's super easy to put together. I mean, that took me less than 30 minutes to do. So super easy to put together. And the it does have sizing for uh the pattern let's see it goes up to and this one could have um uh could be part of the extended block i'm not quite sure i haven't checked uh just yet but it goes up to a 50 inch waist and so and i always use the largest size uh for the ties because i like really long ties so i don't necessarily in any belt cut the length of a tie uh, for belts for me because I just like them to be longer so keep that in mind as well so anyway that's the reversible wrap belt which went together easily now let's get into this dress so Mimi G 9463 this is a sew along obviously um, on um, here on YouTube Norris actually is doing the um, sew along it for this one and it is a really good sew along i did um i didn't go from beginning to end watching it i just picked up on parts where i thought i would um may have uh, a little bit of struggle with <clears throat> um so and i will leave what i'm wearing down below this is the love notion salt whistle top and dress it could be a top or dress i did the top with the little ruffle um so i always forget to mention that and so um like i was saying i do um for the so long just skip around for parts that i think i might struggle with the most um or that i just want to make sure that i do correctly so yeah as you saw in the beginning i made adjustments <clears throat> i lowered let me just show you my um, pattern pieces here on my table i um made the adjustment as you saw to the front piece where i lowered the dark and then um i also lowered the uh the waist dark too and made sure that everything um, was lined up and the spacing between the two um was the same you know was good i also lengthened the um the front placket so both of them the left and the right so for this particular pattern you do have placket pieces um patterns i've been sewing as of late that had any kind of placket on it usually a placket was part of the front but for this one you are adding it to um the front 
bodice piece and it goes together beautifully watch i highly suggest and i did for this section adding that i did watch the video just to make sure i was adding it right because sometimes the instructions for adding bucket uh bucket button plackets can be a little confusing also as you all know i did not do the buttons i did snaps usually for denim anything i make denim i prefer snaps on my garments as opposed to buttons and so one of the things i will point out make sure that you do watch that whole section on the button placket because uh norris was giving some tips about when to add the buttonholes um and i kind of fast forwarded through that i heard him say it but i was like oh i'm not adding buttonholes so i kind of fast forward through that so i do remember him mentioning that so go back and check that out size what size did i make the size pack i have is the largest which goes up to a 24 according to the bust measurements it is a 46 uh go the 20 size 24 is a bust of 46 a waist of 39 and a hip of 48 so my full bust is 45 and my waist is a 39 and hip is a 52 obviously outside of what they say here however when you pull out the the um uh front bodice piece on the uh front it has the finished garment measurements on here and it says for a size 22 is a 48 now i said i was um a 45 however i am using denim denim is denim recommended on here it is it is a uh, denim is recommended however this is what i would say if you're going to use a denim consider making a using a stretch denim i use a stretch denim i want to say it's about 10 to 15 percent stretch in my denim so keep that in mind the type of fabric you use it calls for denim linen types poplin rayon sateen shirtings twill um that type uh those type uh, a fabric so but keep in mind if you do use a denim that you might want to consider denim with stretch i i use the denim with stretch and then the waist on the finished garment waist on here for uh the pattern is a 40 and um then the hip i don't think i had the hip piece in front of me uh but i remember i think it was uh right at 52 yeah it was it was a 52 so Having just told you what my measurements are, and even though I'm using a stretch denim, I was like, okay, this is what I am going to do. After I, you know, I made my adjustments to the bodice front, um, I went ahead and graded out at the waist to a size 24, and I reduced my seam allowance from 5 8 inch is what you're supposed to sew it at. I reduced it to a 3 8 inch seam allowance just to excuse me give myself just a little bit more um ease in there and i'm glad that i did because that worked beautifully that worked beautifully uh, again i will pop up pictures um this is a pattern like i say have fun with the design elements the different fabrics that you use um all of that good stuff the other adjustments um that i made is i uh let's see here Oh, 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 oh. Um, I wanted to tell you how many pattern pieces it is. It is a lot. It's 15 pattern pieces. However, if you do like I do, and I'm going to show you the front and the inside, I actually, and I highly suggest you do this, double your yoke pieces. So the pattern only calls for you to cut out one for the yoke um, front and one for the yoke back. However, I say double up those pieces so you have a clean finish on the inside. I will show you mine. I absolutely love how it looks on the inside. Absolutely love how it looks on the inside. The other thing I did for the sleeve band. So for the sleeve band, if you watch the sew along, um, nor shows how you sew the sleeve together then sew the band together and then put the sleeve inside the the band and all of that and it, no <laughs> i sewed my um i folded my band in half i believe i showed this but i'll just repeat just in case you didn't catch it i um um folded my uh, sleeve band in half i did not interface it because i was using ankara 
<clears throat> and I didn't want it to be overly stiff on Cara the cotton even though it was washed and everything and um, the weave loosened up just a little bit I knew that it was still uh, sturdy enough where I didn't want to add interfacing so I did not add interfacing to my sleeve band so I folded in half pressed and I attached it to the bottom of the sleeve and then sewed everything together like that that was much faster, much easier as opposed to trying to fiddle around and putting one inside the other. I did that. Um, so that is something um, that I did that was a little different. And then let me look at a few of my instructions. The instructions, like I say, I should have said in the beginning of the video, there was a, quite a few steps I skipped because I wasn't doing the, the tabs or the uh, epaulettes on the top and I wasn't doing the bust pockets on the front um, which uh, I love because I really being fuller bust pockets on the front can be a little tricky and hence the reason why I use my nickel colored snaps on the front as opposed to my more matte darker snaps that I um, typically use because I wanted them to stand out and if I, if I use uh, the darker snaps those wouldn't have stood out and plus since I wasn't doing the pocket on the front I did want something on the front to stand out on the garment so hopefully that makes sense um, it there are the steps are broken up when you do your your darts for the bust and um, for the front bodice and then do your darts for the waist and then uh, for the waist uh, the back bodice and then another step further step down to tell you to put the darts in for your skirt Anytime I'm sewing a pattern, I do my darts all at the same time. I don't like breaking it up, stopping and starting, stopping and start, starting. So that's something else you might want to consider when you're going through the instructions. If you're like me, just knock all your darts out all at once. But make sure you're pressing them in the right direction because you want them to nest together when you are putting um, the skirt piece and the bodice piece together. So just keep that in mind as well. Um anything else i'm just looking at because i have so many notes on this pattern <laughs> i don't have any other notes because i didn't do the carriers obviously or the belt and everything but i did look at the belt instructions um watch that in the video and it's actually really easy really really simple to do so if you are going to do the belt per the instructions again i highly recommend uh go ahead and uh watching the video so those are all my adjustments that I have made. Um, size 22 was the top I cut out. And then size 24 from the waist down to the hip. Um, all right. The only part that, so at the end when you're adding the flounce. So there for, so view B you have a flounce and then you have the ruffle at the bottom of the flounce. No, no issues with the uh, flounce at all. It's that ruffle. And I had laughed at Norris when he said, if you attach, make sure you're attaching the ruffle to the flounce correctly, because if you don't, you're going to think that it doesn't fit. And so, <laughs> so yes, the first time I clipped it around, I was like, okay, why is this not fitting? It's like all this extra fabric because I had it attached wrong way around. So once I got it attached the right way around, it's still, it was like, I feel like it was like an inch in certain spots that still wasn't meeting. So what I did was I, um, I put, uh, gathering stitches in the, because it was the, and it could be, keep in mind, because I'm using, um, Ankara non-stretch and then I'm also using a denim which is stretched so has 10 to 15 percent stretch in it so keep that in mind why I had to do this so but if you run into this what I did was I put in gathering stitches at the bottom of the flounce and I just gathered it to around ever so slightly to make sure it went into that the um the ruffle would meet um on the bottom and you can't tell i did that um because it was ever so slightly and then you 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 pressing it and speaking of which don't forget use your clapper okay not an official clapper 
go to your hardware store and get a block that I don't even know what size this is but I went in years ago to my local hardware store and asked for one of these and because they have off cuts of wood you know that's just laying around and they gave it to me for free they didn't charge me so this is what I use every time I pressed a seam and I pressed this denim I had denim fingers you all know what that is who work with denim but um, every time I pressed the seam, the dart, it didn't matter what it was. I was, I immediately applied the, the, um, the wood to it, the wood block to it, just to lock in that, um, heat, lock in that seam and everything. And so ma you want to make sure that you're doing that. If you're going to be working with denim, this probably would be good. Even if you're working with a twill or something in the nature of a denim weight, uh, fabric type to have something like this on hand, um, go to the hardware store but so um that works so you can't tell that i did that at the bottom but i wanted the um the ruffle at the bottom to be able to go around and then you turn the ruffle in and then you're supposed to turn it under and stitch it stitch it down now that uh that wasn't that that whole circle some circumference folding it in didn't work that great because i do have from the outside you cannot sorry my camera cut off on the inside it's just one or two spots where i just end up tucking in at the curve to make sure that everything laid down nicely um and you know you press it and then i turned it under pinned and then stitched all the way around and this is a long circumference at the bottom of this skirt but um but anyway so that that was the only i would say tricky and fiddly bit with the bottom part of these uh dress now the other part of the dress that i had an issue with and now i'm going to show you some key things so you have the button placket and so you can probably tell on mine where at the bottom i have that square at the bottom you're not supposed to have that square at the bottom you're supposed to be able to see the point at the bottom of the placket and i'll show a quick clip here so what happened was um i clipped too deep into the where you're supposed to reinforce where the placket is going i cut too deep into that and so when it was time for me to attach the placket and everything, nothing was meeting up at the bottom. And um, it, well, it couldn't meet up because I had cut too wide in the corner. And so it was just, it was too much. So I had to try to sew in, sew into, sew back up some of the area I cut out. Um, Cause the placket and everything was long enough to sit where it was supposed to, um, but, it because I cut too deep in the corner I was trying to fix that and it looked so tacky I should have popped up a video oh so I was like okay I need to fix that so my fix was to add and let me just again make sure you can see that I add that little square at the bottom so it looks nice and neat and so since I have you up here let me go ahead and show you the inside and so my snaps I'm not going to show how I did snaps um, I've shown that so many times on my uh, videos and I have different videos that show it but let me show you the inside okay so here is the inside so this is what i was talking about with the yoke the back yoke is um the pattern only calls for you to to cut out one but i cut out two because i wanted this clean finish on the inside and i wanted to be decorative um obviously it's pretty much only something i would see <laughs> but i know it's there and i think it's a beautiful touch totally forgot I, my intentions was to add one of my labels, one of my garment labels here, um, but totally forgot. And I don't want to sew through and see the label stitching on the back of the lighter colored denim. So, but that's okay. Um, and then same thing for the front. If I were to turn this around for the front, let me just show you. See there, the yoke front nice clean finish and then this is how the sleeve band turned out so again i just attached it and turned it and just surged it 
and I did top stitch I top stitch all around you can't see because I don't use different color top stitching thread I I'm usually not a fan of uh, different color top stitching thread even in other types of denim but anyway so I did top stitch all around um, and then the bottom of the dress so this is how it looks from a distance on the inside so very nice see how my darts and everything match up that's why I say you want to make sure that if you're going to do all your darts at the same time that you're doing them properly and so this is how it looks this is the front probably not showing this the best but and so that's the back and um or the ruffle hem and so like I said you can't tell where I tucked it in and, and everything on the inside but it still turned out beautiful nice clean finish on the inside and so that's why that's why I wanted the um, that's why I cut out the double yoke and all of that because I wanted this beautiful finish on the inside um, so yeah I absolutely love this is so cute so so cute but I absolutely you guys know uh, and if you don't I love denim outfits I really do and I think this one is so cute it is so super cute snaps were easy to put in I have videos on my channel where I shared um, how to use I have two table press for those who don't know um, and so I use my cam snaps table press that has the dies for setting um, utility snaps and so that is the uh, table press that I use I mean I have a video talking all about that I'll link it down below or up here in the i cards but yeah I wanted my yoke pieces to be the lighter color denim just to have a little something to set it apart so that is that's the only area of the garment that has the lighter colored denim so I am so super happy with it hopefully I have been popping up pictures and videos so you can see the way I styled it um, I did style it both with the belt on both sides just to see how I would like it um, and I like it I think tell me what you think so I'll pop a video of me in the belt um, showing both sides so the darker side and the lighter side so I think with this garment I personally like it on the um, with the darker side showing and with the ties the lighter side of the tie showing. <laughs> so because I was playing with it as I was trying it on and taking pictures and everything and I was like hmm I didn't uh, I was like I prefer the darker side as the main piece of the belt but the ties I prefer the lighter side to show because then I thought it kind of um, brought out like then you would notice I guess the the yoke the yoke is is lighter I don't know you all have to let me know what you think um, uh, with the pictures and everything that I have popped up all right everybody so that is my review that i am happy with it this one i will tell you um because i was trying to do some recording but we had a lot of construction and stuff going on around the house so i didn't do as much of the sew with me as i normally would um for the video but that's fine i think enough of you got the gist of enough plus there is a sew along for this particular pattern um i would totally make this again i would totally make this again and i think because the fabric does call does suggest i should say um a linen um i think the the other version i would do this in is a linen um i don't know that i would do it in a poplin a rayon those are lighter and for me this type of garment um you know to each his own right but i think this type of garment i would stick to a, a a denim or a linen um and so yeah and this would be one because it does talk about plaids needing extra fabric for plaids and matching up stripes this would be one for those who are into stripes and matching stripes and plaids and playing different angles of that this would be super cute <laughs> uh playing with stripes and whatnot so 
yeah i highly recommend the pattern it comes with the sew along so you are good to go with the sew along that so far as adjustments and whatnot those are the adjustments that i have made personally and i would suggest if you need to make those type of adjustments with your seam allowance with the pattern pieces different things of that nature so that is it everybody stay tuned for wednesday's video i will have a little bit of a haul and share with you some of the goodies um that i have talked about um in my video what was that about two weeks ago the so let's talk video um yeah i have some things that have come in and i want to share with you so you kind of see where my mind is headed for um some future projects so make sure you stay tuned for wednesday's video all right everybody let me know what you think leave your comments down below don't forget to thumbs up this video and don't forget to hit the bell so you don't miss my upload coming up on wednesday all right everybody thank you so much again for this pick go out to the community tab pick the one for august and on wednesday you'll hear which one was selected and what i am thinking all right everybody have a blessed one we'll see you on wednesday bye